Christopher Columbus, as the first man to discover the Americas, is a myopic event that only happened in the minds of Eurocentric historians with an Aryan colonial agenda. In Weiner's book, Africa and the Discovery of America, he explains that Columbus noted in his journal that the Native Americans confirmed black-skinned people had come from the southeast in boats, trading in gold-tipped spears. It was found also that the ratio of properties of gold, copper, and silver alloy were identical to the spears, then being forged in Guinea. According to an American historian and linguist Leo Weiner of Harvard University, one of the strongest pieces of evidence to support the fact that Africans sailed to America before Christopher Columbus was a journal entry from Columbus himself. There is now a growing body of evidence to support the idea that Africans did in fact visit the Americas long before Columbus. As there have been solid claims about African explorers, sailors, and traders who made their way to the Americas in ancient times. The idea that Africans may have visited the Americas in pre-Columbian times is not a new one. In fact, widely untaught evidence exists that Africans sailed to the Americas and settled centuries before Columbus. While we commend Christopher Columbus, or should we say Cristobal Colon, for sailing the seas in search of new land on Europe's behalf, he was not the first man to make that journey. However, as is frequently noted on this day, when Columbus landed, natives already inhabited the land. He called them Indians because he initially thought he had reached India. Columbus's first landfall in October 12, 1492, most likely somewhere near the Bahamas or the Dominican Republic was a later time in history. Let us even limit our scope within Europe, and Columbus will still not be the first European to have visited the Americas as many genuine historians suspect that Viking Leif Erikson, who established a settlement in northeastern Canada in the 11th century, was the first European to come to the Americas. The truth is that black Africans, Indians, Polynesians, Chinese and Arabs had visited the Americas long before Columbus. Enormous Olmec head statues with African facial characteristics found throughout Central and South America support that Africans had settled in America long before its apparent discovery, ranging up to 11.15 feet in height and weighing 30 to 40 tons. These statues generally depict helmeted black men with large eyes broad fleshy noses. Columbus was never the first man to arrive at the Americas, rather he was the first to commit genocide. Sex, slavery of young girls, rape, pedophilias, mass mutilations, arbitrary killings, and transatlantic slavery in the Americas. The manufactured history by Columbus's European sponsors must be exposed and forcefully rejected. Columbus and his men took to hunting the fleeing Lucayans down for sport and after murdering them, using their bodies as dog food. Surviving Lucayans fled to the surrounding mountains to escape the sadistic savagery and barbaric treatment of the so-called civilized Christian Europeans toward them. There are eyewitness accounts of fallen Lucayan warriors being fed to hunting dogs while they were still alive screaming and wailing in agony as the dogs feasted on their limbs and entrails. Columbus saw this as a perfect excuse to go to war, and with heavily armed troops and advanced weaponry, it wound up being a very short war. The natives were quickly slaughtered, having only spears, rocks, and other primitive tools to fight with. Eventually, the natives rebelled. History has it that on Christopher Columbus' second visit to the Americas, this time armed to the teeth, he demanded that the Lucayan people give his men food and gold and allow them to have sex with their women. 
When the Lucayan refused, Columbus responded by ordering that their ears and noses be cut off so that the now disfigured offended could return to their villages and serve as a warning to others. The ugly picture that emerges is of a brutal man who massacred the existing population of the islands, the Bahamas amongst others, where he landed, used girls as young as eight or ten for sex and conducted mass mutilations in his hunt for gold. Matthew Inman, the Oatmeal's author, not only exposes this myth, but also shows us who Columbus really was. The U.S. celebrates October 14th as Columbus Day as one of its three federal holidays, reinforcing the myth that Columbus was a great explorer who discovered the New World. Research by some scholars provides population estimates of the pre-Columbian or pre-European contact of the Americas to be as high as 112 million in 1492, which declined to less than 6 million by 1650. The so-called discovery of the Americas by Christopher Columbus was followed by possibly the greatest demographic disaster in the history of the world. He described these people as having black skin, curly hair, and other features that were characteristic of Africans. Similarly, the Italian explorer Amerigo Vespucci, who traveled to the Americas in the late 15th and early 16th centuries, wrote in his accounts that he had encountered people of color in the Caribbean region. He also notes that some of the indigenous people had features that were characteristic of Africans, such as curly hair and dark skin. In his book, Natural History of the Indies, he describes seeing Negroes among the indigenous people of Hispaniola, present-day Dominican Republic and Haiti. One of the most well-known accounts of African presence in the Americas comes from the Spanish explorer, Gonzalo Fernandez de Oviedo y Valdez, who traveled to the Americas in the early 16th century. Thor Heyerdahl was a Norwegian adventurer and ethnographer with a background in zoology, botany, and geography, made voyages to demonstrate the possibility of contact between widely separated ancient peoples, notably the Ray Iii expedition of 1970, when he sailed from the west coast of Africa to Barbados in a papyrus reed boat. These strong currents, which Mali oral tradition describes as rivers in the middle of the sea, could have helped propel African vessels to the American continents. Travel between Africa and the Americas was possible because of the worldwide ocean winds and currents that caused drift routes from east to west. Africans were indeed sailors, that a division of Negro sea captains and mariners is reported to have been in the Egyptian navy of the 19th dynasty, and the East Africans sailed between their countries and China in the 13th century. How could Africans, who are not popularly known as seamen, have crossed the 1,500 Atlantic miles to the American continents? Early 14th century Atlantic expedition headed by Mali King Abu Bakari, i.e., may have reached the Americas. The launching of the expedition is recorded by Arab historian Ibn Fadl al 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 Omari. Archaeological evidence also supports the idea that Africans traveled to India and China in the 13th century. In his memoirs titled, Ritla, Ibn Battuta describes his travels in detail, including his experiences in the court of the Chinese emperor. Born in 1304 in Tangier, Morocco, Ibn Battuta embarked on a journey of exploration that took him to many parts of the world, including India and China. There is strong and compelling evidence to suggest that Africans traveled to India and China in the 13th century, long before the arrival of European explorers in these regions. While it is possible that some of these plants may have been brought over by European traders or explorers, the fact that they have been found in pre-Columbian archaeological sites suggests that they may have arrived much earlier, potentially as a result of contact between Africans and indigenous Americans. The presence of these and other African plant species in the Americas provides compelling evidence to suggest that Africans visited the Americas long before Columbus. The African oil palm has been found in South America, including in the Amazon region, where it was likely brought over by Africans or other non-European visitors. Another example is the cola nut, cola nitida which is native to West Africa and is used in traditional African medicine and religious ceremonies.
This suggests that Africans may have brought the cola nut with them during their visits to the Americas. Cola nuts have been found in archaeological sites in the Americas, including a site in Brazil that dates back to the 14th century, long before Columbus arrived. One example of an African plant species that has been found in the Americas is the tamarind tree, Tamarindus indica. In the Americas, tamarind trees have been found in archaeological sites dating back to before Columbus's arrival, indicating that they may have been brought over by Africans or other non-European visitors. The tamarind tree is native to Africa, but has been introduced to many parts of the world as a food and medicine plant. While some of these plants may have been brought over by European explorers or traders, there is evidence to suggest that many of them arrived in the Americas much earlier, potentially as a result of contact between Africans and indigenous Americans. The presence of certain plant species that are native to Africa in the Americas provides further evidence to support the idea that Africans visited the Americas long before Columbus. Villacorta has written, any way you view it, Mexican civilization had its origin in Africa. Indian scholar Rafik Giarazboy appears to have been right when he wrote, The black began his career in America, not as slave, but as master. Even early Mexican scholars were convinced that the impact of the black explorers on the New World was profound and enduring. 